your love. Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Colored Valley Cooks. Today, we're making hillbilly hot dogs. Y'all gonna find out why they're hillbilly in a few minutes. Um, I am just warming the weenies up on the skillet thing. And now, I'm gonna brown some ground beef and we're gonna start making some uh, chili sauce. And this is just some ground beef I had in the freezer. So it's not really red anymore, because I had it in the freezer. And I didn't put it up when it was real red. It's time you need to use the chili, spaghetti, stuff like that. It's still a little pink. And we're about out of ketchup. Chris had to go out to the truck and get packed to catch up. So we'd have enough for hot dogs. <laughs> I don't even have enough ketchup that I can make french fries. Talk about hillbilly. Yeah. We're having to use McDonald's ketchup. So, <laughs> I used all my ketchup in that barbecue sauce I made. I don't have any left. What? I know. Let me grab something out of here. I'm always backing proof up. So, thank goodness I got some tomato sauce to go in a chili sauce, which is what I use anyway instead of ketchup. I pretty much make it like I do my chili. I just don't um, put the beans and the tomatoes in it. So you're gonna chop up a medium onion. You're gonna brown about a pound of ground beef. I'm gonna throw this on onion in there with it. And a lot of people don't put pepper in their chili sauce, I noticed. But I don't know why, I mean, I love pepper. So we're going to use some. Somebody asked what kind of hot dogs these are. These are some uh, hot dogs we got from Aldi's. They're actually the, the German brand of hot dogs. Yeah, they're actually yeah. in lengths and you have to cut them apart. Yeah, it's got to be good. They look good. And to me, nothing would be any better in chili sauce than a delicious colored pepper, mm -hmm. sweet pepper. Oh, they smell so good. I just love them. These are Cutco knives. Somebody asked what kind of knives these are. Yeah, these are Cutco. They're real expensive. Uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you. There are, there's an alternative blade that I would recommend on the website. If you want to see everything I use, just go to www.colorvalleycooks.com and, uh, or look in the description link, and I'll have a link. Go in there and browse around, but they're under utensils. But I have another brand that's a really good German blade that's not quite as expensive as my Cutco. So you can pick either one. And I'm gonna tell you the truth. I've got that whole set of Cutco knives and this is the one I use the most. So if I were gonna invest in something, it would be one of those. the chef knife. Yeah. And you don't have to get the Cutco. You can get the other brand. Yeah. A good I'm chef sure knife is the number one. That it would work yeah. just fine. You didn't turn up those weenies, did you? No. Oh. But I'm, um, I mean, since oh, they're... Oh, it's just this. Oh, since they're different from the... Uh, no, they're fine. Okay. I got them down low. Okay. All right, we're going to chop this up with my hamburger chopper. Yeah, they had those on sale at Aldi, and we thought, we've never had a German hot dog. We're going to get one. Now, one thing you do want to do is make sure that your ground beef is nice and separated. For what you're doing today. Okay, you don't want to have big hunks. All right, let's put this in here and let it be brown and wet. That I'm good. And I think that's Chuck, so it's not going to have a lot of grease. So we may not even have to drain it, I'm hoping. That's what we're hoping. We got it turned up on high, but this is gas, so it's a little slow burner. So we're gonna let that simmer a minute. We got some small made. Y'all seen me make that a few nights ago. So we've ate it once and now we'll have it twice. 
I don't know, I might was supposed to take these out of their case, but that would defeat the whole purpose in my opinion of having a hot dog. I don't think you have to. I don't think you have to. The only thing about these weenies is they don't roll on four sides like they're, the weenies you get at the store. They're made in square, kind of like a square. And so you can flip them and flip them and flip them. But with these weenies, they're not made like that. It's a little different. So we'll go ahead and open our can of sauce. We're gonna eat pretty quick. We're not gonna wait on this to sit here for two hours because I wanted y'all to see how I do it. We do, uh, Michelle Richie asked if we have a video about cast iron and we do, she does have a video. If you'll just search cast iron care, call yeah. body cooks. You'll find out it's not near as complicated as everybody makes yeah, it out to be. It's pretty easy. You can use soap on it. Back years ago, when your great 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 grandmother told you not to use soap, it's because they had lime their soap, and it would ruin them. But they don't. It don't ruin them. Not the kind of soap we use today. And but you don't I think what will sitting. ruin it: yeah, yeah. tomatoes and high yeah. acid foods. Yeah. Will you're better off not making your spaghetti sauce and stuff like that in your cast iron. Which is what you're about to do. Yeah, which is what I'm about. To do. <laughs> But we'll get it cleaned up. It won't. But I mean, it's chili yeah. sauce. It's not like pure just tomatoes. Yeah. Um, the only thing that's ever really taken the finish off mine, for real, is fresh uh, cherries. When I made some cherry filling for a pie. It did. All right. So we do have a little bit of grease. We need to get out of here. And of course, I'd have people that don't agree with me on that one. But look, I've been washing my cast iron my whole life in my dishwater, and so did my mama. And there ain't nothing wrong with our cast iron. It's iron for heaven's sake, you know. And somebody asked about taking care of the cutting boards. We usually put, you know, some kind of olive oil or mineral oil on I'll it. I'll tell you, that's not really the best thing because no. I've already learned the hard way. I'm soaking this up with paper towels. Uh, if you really want to do a good job with your cutting boards, if you have a really nice one, go to Home Depot and look, and you will find something that you're actually supposed to put on cabinets. And, uh, you know, cut wood. Yeah. Because you're not going to get this stuff on cabinets. It's going to be on the floor. Yeah. You know, and it'll, it'll say, you know, that it's safe for cooking and all that. And I think it would probably help it. Keep it from, um, what am I trying to say? Keep it sealed where it won't it smell sealed. and yeah. take care of them. Help me out, Chris. I'm yep. trying to cook. Gina All right, we're going to put in some tomato sauce. I'm going to put, um, for now, about half a can. So I don't think I'm going to put much in here. Gina Badeau gave $2. Thank you, Gina Badeau. Gina. We appreciate that. All right, that made it look red, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's chilly. All right, now we're going to put in some chili powder. We're going to put in about a tablespoon of chili powder. We're going to put in about a whoo, half teaspoon of basil. And I'm going to put in some garlic. So while we're waiting on the garlic, we'll go ahead and stir this up and get this in here. You go ahead and cut these off. Let it be marinating. Yeah, I guess. Okay, I'm going to cut off the Frankfurters. You know what I want to do? What? As soon as I mix this up, I might stick the Frankfurters in here and make sure that they get good and done. Hmm. All right, here we go. I got to get me a garlic clove. Oh, uh, uh, this lady, Gayla, I think is her name, says that her mama just gave her her 70-year-old cast iron skillets. Oh, She's 88. Nice. She can't cook with them anymore. They're too heavy. Yeah, they do get heavy for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, the people. I sure love them. All right, you need one garlic clove. 
just a regular, you know, size garlic clove. Because you're going to press it, and when you press your garlic, uh, it really brings it out more than if you just slice it up and throw it in there. Where's my garlic press? Do you have any idea where my garlic press is? Mm. Do you see it? Or am I blind? I guess it's over here, shouldn't it? It's probably where it don't belong. Well, I don't see it anyway. Boy. Here it is. Uh -huh. Where we looked the first time. It's supposed to have this little green thing in it, and that's why I couldn't see it. Oh. Okay, I'll show you this garlic press because it's really cool. Alright, you stick it in there and press it. What's cool about that? I'm showing you. It comes with this little uh, thing. Believe it or not, that's all the garlic that needs. But it has this little thing that actually snip. It actually fits in the handle, and it scrapes the huh. gunk out there. of the. Yeah, it's really nice. nice. Let's throw it all in there. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and while I'm getting the plate ready, I'm going to stick a couple of these in here just to make sure they're good and done. I don't know much about this German. This German stuff. Hmm. You're cooking the hot dogs in with the chili. Why not? Huh? Yeah. Got that. Well, it's because I can't brown them all the way around, and I'm a little, you know, anxious about making sure they're good and done. Mm -hmm. We'll just bury them. Miss Ellie, nine ninety nine. Well, thank you, Miss Ellie. Thank you, Miss Ellie. Miss Ellie is new. I have not seen Miss Ellie's thing on there. All right, we're going to let those sit in there and just cook for a second, just like that. Huh. Let me taste this. The chili? Yeah, it needs some. What does it need? Barely. It needs barely a little salt and pepper. Okay. Sounds good. But you know those hot dogs got plenty of sodium in them. Did you say that barely? Deborah Taylor says if you cook oh, tomato sauce so in your cast iron, it'll help your anemia. Because and you do get iron from Keep cooking pepper. from cooking in your uh, cast iron. That is true. Okay, watch. This is why this is going to be hillbilly. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to go ahead and make both of our plates or just make mine? Uh, you can just make yours. I'll just make mine for now. Um, we're out of buns. The kids... We have three buns. We have three buns and we're giving those to the girls. So me and Chris are having hillbilly hot dogs. Because they can't handle the... So we're having loaf bread. They can't handle the I loaf bread. I don't have any white loaf bread because me and Chris don't eat it. So I'm going to put me a piece of loaf bread. Now Chris will get two pieces because he, he wants two hot dogs. But I just want one. Okay? Alrighty. And then this is my slaw. So most of y'all growing up probably... And I'm going to go ahead and turn these off. Ate your hot dogs on loaf bread. <laughs> yeah, like me. And then you'd fuss. This is not a hot dog. Look at that nice hot dog. Mm hmm. Get your chili sauce. Good. Get you some slaw. Some homemade slaw. Don't buy none at the. No, Lord, no. Don't buy it from the grocery store. Sorry if you work in the grocery store. I don't know. If y'all shred your slaw, sure, get it there. But if y'all get it in and y'all just mix it up. There's probably some grocery stores that they are right. Look at that. Now, it's not what I like. I love mustard. Mm. Why not? Of course, a lot of y'all probably got uh, hamburgers and hot dogs on loaf bread. <laughs> the hamburger, the hot dog wasn't too bad on loaf bread, but the hamburger, because it was greasy, it'd get all 
<laughs> it was hard to eat. A, it was hard to eat a hamburger on you white bread. You can tell when I'm hungry because all I do is lick my fingers. Uh -huh. Cause we're on YouTube. Okay, give me a fork. And we turn that off so it went to get overdone. It's gonna make me a sweet tea right quick because I'm, I'm thirsty. All right. I'll just wait two seconds on it. Yeah, the uh, the hamburger on white bread, all soggy with mustard and ketchup. Was what you got at my grandmother's house? Yeah, they, might, yeah. <laughs> they didn't even know they didn't even know you could buy hamburger buns. They just didn't spend the money on it. No. I make my tea in this big jug every week. Oh, I make it two or three times a week. I made it this morning when I got up. And uh, I use seven regular tea bags in my pot. Let's give this German hot dog a try. Y'all ready? Now, y'all know if it was a real hillbilly hot dog, we probably wouldn't have a German hot dog from Aldi's. Aldi. How is it? Good. It is good? Mm -hmm. I figured it would be. I'm it's sure really y'all all have a favorite brand of hot dog. Oh, this is better than a pack of hot dog weenie. It is? <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, of course. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Nothing better than a chili slaw dog. Mm -mm. Except having it on a bun. No, this is good. <laughs> It's the same thing. It's bread. It just don't look the same. I know. That's just what they told me when I was here. Yeah, they had those hot dogs. It said limited time only. German cased hot dogs. And it's a big pack. So we're going to make some sauerkraut weenies too. In a few, you know, they'll last forever. So yeah. we'll, we'll make them in a few. Nathan's, that's a nice. good hot dog. That is true. Yes, it is. We somebody like asked about onions. We have onions in And we the, like uh, Hebrew National, too. Yeah, Hebrew National's a good hot dog. But most of the time, I just get ballpark beef. Mm -hmm. They're good, too. And I just want to play no hot dog. Y'all have a blessed day, and thanks for watching Hillbilly Hot Dogs with Tammy and Chris on Collard Valley Cooks. Love ya. Bye.